This episode of Proper English is brought to you by phrasal verbs about travel and the idiom fell off the back of a lorry. Alison. And I'm Dave. And we'd like to welcome you to the 10th episode of our podcast, which, as you know, is called Proper English. English. If you're learning English and you want to know the correct word to use in a particular situation, if you get stuck thinking of the right preposition, if you're puzzled by definite and indefinite articles, then Proper English is just the thing for you. Well, we've been putting it off, but now that we've reached double figures, we're going to tackle phrasal verbs. All of them? (laughs) Well, there are thousands. Literally? Yeah, so let's just do a few of them today, Dave. Phew, thank goodness for that. (laughs) Rather than learning a random list, which is, well, random. That's true. Or learning ones with the same root verb, which ends up becoming confusing... We're going to go with the often suggested strategy of learning thematically. Yes. And as your keen language learners, we know lots of you are also keen travellers too. Mm. So we're going to look at some phrasal verbs used when talking about travel. Awesome. We love travelling as well. We do. And we'd like to do so much more of it if we could. We would. We're actually planning a trip to Italy at the moment. And we thought that might be a handy way of illustrating this topic. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now... You love to spend hours researching and planning on the internet when we're thinking about getting away. Mm -hmm. Get away. First phrasal verb. Yep. See which other ones you can spot. We'll have a recap at the end of our conversation. Um, Right, okay. So, have you booked us into anywhere yet? Yes, Dave. I've spent many happy hours looking for accommodation and I've booked us into some hotels and apartments. I'm really looking forward to our trip. When do we set off? We leave in the morning. We need to be ready to get in the car by 10. When we get to the railway station, we'll get on the train to Lisbon. We'll leave plenty of time in case we get held up on the way. What time do we take off? Not until after two o'clock, and we'll check it online a day or two before, but we'll need to allow enough time to drop off the cases. I hope the plane gets off on time. I hate being delayed. Yeah, you do get really fed up when you have to wait, don't you, It's true, it's true. What do you want to do when we arrive? Well, when we land and get off the plane, your friend Valentina might be there to pick us up. With any luck. If not, we could get a taxi or a bus, I guess, if we're feeling confident. Oh, I suppose we could. While we're in Rome, I'd really like to look around the Colosseum. And in Florence, I want to visit the Leonardo da Vinci Museum. And in Venice, there's art everywhere. Yes, there's a lot to pack into a few days. Oh. I'm exhausted just thinking about it. Yeah. Me too. And we can't even stay on for another day or two anywhere, as I've got all the accommodation organised already. I'm thinking that a hop-on, hop-off tour might be a good idea in the larger cities, Mm -hmm. you know, on one of them buses. Mm -hmm. There'll be so many sights to take in, we might miss a lot if we're on foot. So, how many did you spot? Between us, we used 18 phrasal verbs in that short conversation. How many? We use them a lot. And you know, most native English speakers are completely unaware of them. Nobody ever taught them to us. We just picked them up. There's another one. Oh, yeah. Do you know, uh, before we started teaching online, I didn't even know what phrasal verbs were. No, no, me neither. Yeah. So let's go through them in order. If you didn't notice them all, you can always pause here and have another listen before we tell you. Okay. So, firstly, get away means to have a holiday uh, and can be used as a noun in the same way. Or we're planning a getaway in September. Lovely. To get away can also mean to escape. And it can be used to describe the person who drives the car away at speed from a bank robbery. The getaway driver. There's another one of these phrasal verbs that we've used today that can also be used to describe a law-breaking activity. See if you can spot it. Book in when you make a formal arrangement to stay somewhere. Yep, that's true. Looking forward, which is the happy anticipation of an event in the future. Set off. We can also use set out and get off, but they all mean to begin the journey. That's true. Get off's more informal, isn't it? I think so, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Shall we get off? Mm. Yeah. Mm. Uh, and then there's get in and get on. There's a lot of gets. 
going on. <laughs> get is a, it is a word in English that we use a lot. Yeah. So get in and get on. Uh, we talked about these in episode two back in the day. Mm-hmm. Uh, interestingly, we can also use get in to mean the arrival of a train. Uh, what time is the plane getting in, for instance? Or what time is the train or a long distance coach? Uh, what time will you get into Rome? Uh, then, of course, once we've got into Rome, we will get off the plane. Then we talked about hold up, being held up, which means a delay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and take off when the plane leaves the ground. Although you can also describe yourself as taking off when you're leaving somewhere. Yeah, odd that it's quite specific to those two instances. We, we don't describe a train as taking off. Just leaving or departing. Ah, well, you see, a train doesn't leave the ground, does it? Mm, but takes off. Take off somewhere. Uh, well, yeah, I suppose it's, mm. it must fly, must take off. Mm. Yeah, maybe. Okay. I don't know. Then we talked about check-in, we which did. is to arrive and register at the airport or at a hotel. Yeah. And in the hotel, you also check out when you leave. And that's yeah. when you pay any bill, outstanding bill, or return the key. Yeah. We discovered uh, the other day that uh, check-in is the same in Portuguese as it is in English. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so uh, drop off, uh, which can mean falling asleep, but that's a bit different. But uh, it also means taking someone or something to a place and leaving it there or them. Then we used fed up, not only to do with travelling, actually. Um, it means when you're tired of a situation. Yeah. Also, uh, there's pick up, uh, which means to take somebody in your car. Look around, just means to explore somewhere. Pack in can mean informally to stop doing something, uh, but it, uh, in the context that we used it, it meant to do a lot of things together. Stay on, that would mean to remain somewhere longer than you had planned. And then there's hop on and hop off, which is, a, in, a, which is an informal way of describing getting on or off, uh, most likely getting on or off a bus. Mm-hmm. Take in, so include, visit places, again, quite informal. A couple of others we didn't use are speed up and hurry up, and they both mean increase speed or perform a task more quickly. And lastly, another one we could have used but didn't would be see off, which means to go with somebody to the airport, train station, whatever, and say goodbye. (laughs) And your dad used to use it in a particular way, didn't he, Dave? He did, yeah. Uh, Whenever we visited my mum and dad, uh, at the end of the visit, he would say he was seeing us off the premises Uh, like he would see off a naughty dog or something like that. (laughs) (laughs) And now it's time for Idiom of the Week. Idiom of the Week? Keeping to the travel and transport theme, today's expression is, it fell off the back of a lorry. Yep. And as we've mentioned before, plenty of idiomatic expressions originate in criminal activity. And this one is no different. We use the expression when we believe... Something is stolen. Mm, its use is light-hearted. Where did your neighbour get the television from? I don't know. I think it fell off the back of a lorry. Originally, the term referred to something shoddy. That's a great word. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's shoddy. It means of poor quality. It now refers to any illegally obtained item. Wordhistories.net gives some examples where the thieves themselves have tried to use it as a (laughs) defence. A newspaper in 1937 reported a thief carrying two dead chickens and explaining to the arresting officer they fell off the back of a lorry. Other instances used also include fell off the back of a truck, the American version. And Oh, yeah. And there's a subject for a future podcast, I reckon. Mm. The differences between American English and British English. Yeah, yeah, there's plenty of material there. So that's your lot for this week. If you're enjoying our podcast, please let us know. Mm. Do leave us some feedback, maybe by sending us an email. Proper English. Or one word. At sapo.pt Or, if you notice which other phrasal verb has a meaning related to criminal intent, we'd love to hear from you. And if you have friends who are learning English, let them know about us. They can find us by searching Proper English on Podbean. Or Apple Podcasts. Or Spotify. Or whichever podcast directory they prefer. Don't forget to like us and follow us. So until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from me too. And thank you for listening to... Proper English. English.